Hey guys, it's Sebastian, and today we are going to talk about the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliance card from American Express. If you are someone who previously had the SPG Luxury card, this is the same card, but with a new branding. I'll talk about the perks of the card, bonuses, and pretty much everything else you want to know about it. Think of this as a 2019 review. The first thing a lot of people are probably wondering about is whether the one lane rule is still in play, and yes it is. I'll put all the rules up on the screen for you to read because that's not really the point of this video, but just so you know. This means if you are someone who previously got the SPG card, the basic one that we talked about for $95 from American Express before they discontinued it, you are going to be eligible for this bonus. Diving into the sign-up bonus, the limited time sign-up bonus is going to be 100,000 Marriott Bonvoy points after spending $5,000 within the first three months. This offer ends on April 24th of 2019. Marriott point valuations is kind of a weird little topic by itself, so we will talk about that towards the middle. There is an annual fee of $450, but this is going to be offset by a $300 Marriott credit that you can use towards room rate at any of their properties. So that might be one night in a very expensive hotel, or maybe it's six nights at a $50 hotel. This means that the effective annual fee is $150. One of the other benefits is that you get an anniversary night every year after your first year. This means that you are effectively paying $150 for that night. When I talk about anniversary, I'm talking about you getting the card and keeping it for a year. So if you get it right now, 12 months from now, 24, 36, 48, every 12 month cycle, this certificate is going to last for 12 months from issuance and you have to use it within that time frame. So you can't book outside of that period. The free night can be used at any property that's 50,000 points or less. This means that the optimal strategy is to use it at somewhere that's 50,000 points because you're probably getting the most value there. And so we'll talk about all that in the middle. With this card, you also get Marriott Gold status and you can get Platinum status after $75,000 is spent within a calendar year on the card. In terms of multipliers, you're going to earn 6x back at Marriott's, 3x back on flights booked directly of airlines, as well as US restaurants, and 2x points back on everything else. That's the basics of the card. Let me know down below what your thoughts are on it right now. Also, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. With the card, there are three big questions. What the points are going to be worth, whether the free night is going to be useful, and also whether it makes sense to spend on the card other than the sign-up bonus and other than keeping it as a long-term keeper card. For the first one, I think it really depends on how you travel and also how you want to redeem those points. So you can redeem it towards hotels or you can transfer it over to airlines. With airlines, it maintains the old transfer rate from SPG. So before SPG, 20,000 points would equate to 25,000 airline points. Given that three Marriott Bonvoy points is equivalent to one old SPG points, then 60,000 Marriott points is going to be equal to 25,000 of these airline points. For me, I think the best transfer partners in this situation are ones that you can't readily get points for. So Korean Airlines, as well as JAL, so Japan Airlines, are going to be very good choices because it's either impossible or just very difficult to get points. Another interesting one would also be Alaska, but I feel like it's pretty easy to generate Alaska points right now, so maybe less applicable. For these, in order to get maximum value, you're probably looking at first class and business class flights. So it depends on if you're someone who likes doing that type of stuff. Different people are going to have different valuations here. So US credit card guides value the points if you transfer it out to airlines at 0.7 cents per point. If you're booking hotels at 0.8 cents per point. For TPG, he values it at around 0.9 cents per point. For me, I'm leaning towards 0.8 cents per point for airlines and 1 cents per point for hotels. But I am kind of a weird edge case because I'm not going to use my points unless it makes sense. For me, I'm comfortable paying out of pocket if it's something reasonable, if it's something between $100 to $200. I don't mind paying for that if the value isn't there. Quick side note before I continue, but if you do want to learn more about the card and you want to support the channel, pretty easy way to do that would be to use the links on our site or the links in the description box down below. Another way to think of it is if a grocery store that you like gave you a coupon to get any item, what would you get? For me, I'm going to pick the most expensive one because that's the optimal strategy. I'm probably going to use it to get a steak or get lobster or something. I'm not going to use it to get a bag of chips because I don't mind paying money for that bag of chips. For you, I would look into where you want to travel, how many points it's going to cost, and also the typical pricing. If you are doing this, I'd recommend looking at a few different properties because you probably aren't only doing one trip, you're probably considering a few places or maybe doing multiple trips a year. So again, do that two, three times. Take the price per night after tax 
for the property times it by the number of nights you are going to stay there. So optimal strategy is going to be five nights just because you get that fifth night free divided by the total number of points you are going to need to use times 100 and that's your CPP cents per point valuation. In case anyone's confused and if you want to play off a calculator, I'll put a link down below if that helps your decision making. Moving on to number two, we are going to look at where you can use that free anniversary night and also whether it makes sense. For me, I've been traveling to Southeast Asia more and I feel like that's where the value is. So for Langkawi, you can stay at the Ritz-Carlton or the St. Regis for that free anniversary night. The rack rate for the Ritz is about $500, but again, that might change depending on when you go. If you have two people with the car, then this is going to be a pretty good way to stack on two nights. And there also is another property in Langkawi that makes a lot of sense if you have another SPG card. So that's going to be a 35k property called the Endemin, and that's a bit north. It's about 30 minutes, but the grab ride is, I think, like $6, so pretty good deal there. And the benefit of the Endemin is that there are monkeys there. He already stole some food from guest rooms. Andaman is a bit of an older property, but I think it was still pretty cool of a trip. And again, for me, I want to find ways for me to redeem these nights in a way that I'm getting value compared to paying cash. If you want to see more of this trip, Mandy is editing content for her channel, Mandy Roams. So you'll probably see the videos up in a few days. For me, I typically also book flights when there are deals. And oftentimes there are flight deals when it's not peak season. So when it's either normal, so standard timing, or when it's off peak. So for me, these certificate nights still end up working wonders because these properties are still going to be expensive even during off peak. Going to Langkawi Insight, the low season is September to October due to the rain. Picking the Ritz for October 1st, we still come out at $491. Remember that you are effectively paying $150 for this night, 450 minus 300. So it's probably going to make sense even at $250, $300 because you're coming out ahead. The final thing is whether it makes sense to use these cards. And I think it makes sense only if you're booking Bonvoy properties for that 6x back. I wouldn't use this for the 3x back or 2x back categories because it doesn't make sense. And we did do a video talking about why the MX Platinum 5x back doesn't really make sense for most cases because you're not getting the benefits of status. To me, this card is a keeper card, but it's something that I'm not actively going to use unless I'm staying at these properties. So my goal is to have it for that $150 anniversary night, and that's pretty much it. With that said, if you are someone who wants to learn more about this card and you want to support the channel, a pretty easy way to do that would be to use the links on our sites or the links in the description box down below. Hopefully that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on this card and where would you use that free anniversary night? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. If you know anyone else who benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.